You probably never heard of BlackRock, but this seemingly low-profile company is a financial behemoth quietly shaping the world. With over $10 trillion in assets under management, BlackRock stands as the largest asset management firm globally, controlling a staggering portion of the world's wealth. Its influence extends across industries, from media to government assets, making it a silent giant with a global reach. Today, we're diving into the shadows to unravel the impact of BlackRock's dominance. How did this company gain so much power? And what are the real-world consequences of its influence? Hey, welcome to Documentaries Wire. We're delighted to have you here today. But before we jump into the video, we'd love to see your support. Please take a moment to show some love by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel. BlackRock didn't become a massive financial force overnight. It all started with Larry Fink, a figure largely unknown to the general public. Larry's journey began with a bachelor's degree in political science from UCLA, fueling his early political aspirations. However, he quickly recognized that real power lay in finance, prompting a shift in focus to banking and real estate during his college years. Entering the banking scene, Larry found himself at First Boston, a New York-based investment bank where he made an indelible mark. His tenure there wasn't challenging, but Larry's ambition proved unstoppable. In the mid-80s, a power struggle brewed within First Boston, with Larry eyeing the coveted CEO position. However, his aspirations came at a cost, leading to a significant blunder in 1986. During this pivotal moment, Larry faced financial turbulence, losing a staggering $100 million with the bank's money within a few short months. The goodwill and reputation he had carefully built began to crumble, resulting in his eventual banishment from First Boston. Larry's dreams of world domination in the financial realm seemed like nothing more than a fantasy. Yet, Larry Fink was not one to concede defeat easily. Rather than succumbing to the setback, he saw an opportunity in the chaos. Vowing to make risk management his primary focus, Larry harnessed the crisis to fuel his determination. Unemployed at the age of 36, Larry leveraged his connections from the secretive Kappa Beta Phi, a group that included figures like Michael Bloomberg and Goldman Sachs chairman. In 1988, BlackRock was born, and in just five years, it skyrocketed from a $5 million company to one boasting assets worth over $8 billion. The early years of BlackRock were not without internal struggles, as power dynamics within the company came to the forefront. Driven by a vision for global dominance, Larry sought a larger piece of the pie, leading to pressure and co-founders like Schwarzman. In 1995, this internal power play resulted in Schwarzman selling his stake in BlackRock for $250 million, a move that, in retrospect, would be worth over $12 billion today. But what was BlackRock's secret to navigating the tumultuous waters of the 2008 financial crisis that left many financial institutions capsized. The answer lies in its strategic focus on asset management and a keen understanding of the mortgage-backed securities landscape. As the housing market bubble burst, mortgage-backed securities faced a catastrophic fallout. However, with its emphasis on asset management rather than risky financial instruments, BlackRock found itself in a relatively secure position. While other institutions crumbled under the weight of toxic assets, BlackRock's portfolio remained resilient. The connections between Larry Fink, the visionary behind BlackRock, and key figures like U.S. Treasury Secretary Timothy Gaithner proved instrumental. Fink's personal ties with Gaithner, cultivated over the years in the financial sector, played a crucial role during the crisis. It's not just about what you know, it's also about who you know. In the aftermath of the financial crisis, BlackRock emerged as a stabilizing force, leveraging its reputation and relationships. The firm secured uncontested contracts 
to manage banks' distressed assets reeling from the crisis. This move not only shielded BlackRock from the brunt of the financial storm, but positioned it as a key player in the recovery process. By the end of 2009, BlackRock's assets under management had surged to over $3 trillion, marking a significant leap from pre-crisis levels. Now, diversification is BlackRock's game-changer, and the spotlight falls on its expansion into exchange-traded funds. ETFs became an investment phenomenon known for the stability and solid returns. BlackRock recognized the trend and strategically positioned itself, becoming the colossus that manages a staggering $9.5 trillion ETF assets today. Then there's Aladdin, BlackRock's financial wizard. This supercomputer isn't just a technological marvel. It's the cornerstone of managing over $20 trillion in assets. Aladdin's predictive prowess navigates market trends, giving BlackRock an unparalleled edge in investment strategy. But it doesn't end there. BlackRock's influence extends beyond financial markets to major corporations. Picture this. They hold ownership stakes in media giants like Fox, CBS, and even Disney. They own 18% of Fox, 16% of CBS, placing BlackRock in the driver's seat of media conglomerates. The implications are profound. Controlling media means controlling information dissemination, shaping public perception, and influencing awareness. Yet, BlackRock's way goes beyond the media. Their tentacles reach into banks, insurance companies, and social media giants contributing to massive data collection. Aladdin, with its analytical prowess, possesses vast personal data on individuals globally. The ethical concerns are glaring, raising questions about the responsible use of such extensive data. Moreover, BlackRock's control over data translates into influence over governments. The web of connections between financial power, media dominance, and data control paints a picture of an entity with unprecedented global reach. Another crucial aspect of BlackRock's influence lies in its sway over government decisions, a power deeply rooted in its ownership of banks and active participation in economic policy making. There were instances where BlackRock has strategically lobbied for contracts to manage government assets, solidifying its role as a financial player and a key influencer in economic policy. The intricate dance between BlackRock's dual roles as asset manager and regulator raises eyebrows. The potential conflicts of interest are glaring as the entity responsible for managing assets also shapes the regulations governing those assets. The consequences of this interplay are far-reaching, impacting not just financial landscapes but the overall governance of nations. A significant chapter in BlackRock's global influence unfolds in China, where in 2020, it became the first foreign company granted access to the country's mutual fund industry. The implications are massive. BlackRock's investments in Chinese companies, some involved in controversial activities, raise concerns about ethics, values, and the alignment of financial power with authoritarian regimes. The consequences of BlackRock's collaboration with authoritarian regimes extend beyond financial gains. There's a palpable impact on Western democracy and values. As BlackRock becomes caught with regimes that operate counter to democratic principles, questions arise about the values sacrificed in pursuing financial prowess. Furthermore, BlackRock's influence doesn't stop at financial markets. It extends into the very fabric of societal values through its push for companies to contribute society based on environmental, social, and corporate governance scores. This initiative prompts companies to improve their ESG scores, shaping their policies and actions to align with these criteria. As companies strive to enhance their ESG scores, the potential consequences of ESG-driven decision-making on society become significant. This paradigm shift impacts not only corporate behavior but also influences broader societal and environmental concerns.
emphasizing sustainability, social responsibility, and ethical governance transforms businesses' global operations. In conclusion, BlackRock's influence is far-reaching, molding cultural and political landscapes globally. As we witness the evolution of financial giants into cultural architects, a pressing need arises for awareness and scrutiny. Understanding the actions and impact of such influential financial entities is crucial for ensuring that their power aligns with the greater good. So, how much influence should these entities wield? And to what extent should society be shaped by their values?